Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Matt Horn is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. I am a ghost, an elite soldier. Trained to strike my enemies before they know I exist. Hey, Matt, this is Mark and Ime playing Captain Gibson from Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Give me a call back when you get this, I guess. Talk soon. So on the line, we have Mark Ganime talking to us from... Where are you talking to us from, Mark? I'm calling you from Montreal, Canada. Really? Yep. It's where they do these things. Ubisoft, one of their major uh, headquarters is based out of Montreal. Well, I need to ask you a question. You can join in the debate, I suppose, with the wonderful Canadian actors that we have on this podcast. Montreal, Vancouver and Toronto. Which is the best Canadian city? Uh, it depends on what you want. I mean, they all have their pluses and minuses. I mean, Montreal has a dreadful winter, but amazing skiing for, for, for where we are, for the East Coast. And it's got a lot of vibrancy, a lot of heart, a lot of energy and culture. It's very heavily European influenced from the architecture to the food, to the people, to the French language. Uh, all the signs are in French in Montreal versus, versus uh, the rest of Canada. And then, you know, you have the beauty of where I used to live, Vancouver. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful cities to live in on the planet. Um, wonderful place to be, uh, if you don't mind the rain, if you can deal with the rain. And Toronto, I've never lived in Toronto, but Toronto is, uh, is very, very, um, it's become a lot more multicultural. It's become a lot more vibrant um, than it used to be as far as uh, the differences between, like, say, Montreal and Toronto. But all equally wonderful cities in their own right. I do live here with my small family and, and call Montreal home and love it very much. Hmm. Well, I need to level with you, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you're the first person of 2019. Well, that's lucky for me, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> and people are saying to me, why have, you, why have you been off the air for nine months? Well, I've been... No, I mean, to be fair, I've been editing quite a bit. There's a whole lot of a backlog going on. And where are we now, Mark? Where are we now? We're no better off where we were before, I think. I mean, Trump's still in America. Your prime minister's in a bit of bother at the minute with photographs. He's tripped up a little bit, yep. Yeah, and we're no closer to Brexit. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm at break point. Yeah, there are quite a few breaking points that are, that are, that are very close at this point. Mm, which is why we've got you here. <laughs> well, I am happy to, happy to be here. So, the reason why we've got you here is uh, to talk about the new Tom Clancy game, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Do it. Mm. What was production of the game like for you? You know, this was my first video game, so it was my first chance, my first crack at mocap, pcap, uh, voiceover for video games. I mean, I've done voiceover and I've done ADR before, but it was specifically for the video game genre, it was incredible. I mean, I, you know, I grew up playing Nintendo and, and all those things and, and uh, consuming the games. I didn't really go into the uh, first-person shooter games uh, in, in, in life. I kind of got away from video games uh, before college. But, um, you know, I've always been fascinated by the production of, of these sort of things and, and what's involved. And then when I got to throw on the suit with the Velcro and the, and the, and the, the camera headgear, it was surreal. It was incredible to be part of something that, uh, that takes such a giant amount of collaboration with all sorts of people in this weird warehouse space with 50 cameras staring at you. It was very cool. It was very cool. I was, uh, I was nervous at first, obviously, uh, first dive in, in, a, in a new medium. But uh, honestly, the, the Ubisoft team in Montreal is incredible. They're all very, uh, very chill, very welcoming, um, and they explained things very well for a first timer. And then it was like I was working with some old friends from different shows that I've worked on, different TV shows that have more experience, and they were very gracious. Patricia Somerset, Amber Goldfarb, uh, Sean Baichu, I'm pronouncing his last name. But these, these people that I've worked with uh, in, in 
film and television that have more experience were very quick to take me under their wing and show me how to how to do things that I was maybe you know unsure of. So the whole process, to answer your question in the short form, the whole process was fantastic, and I was I was so stoked to to be part of this family. Now, obviously, I do have a lot of Canadian actors come through my doors, basically, and they have always compared mocap to a kind of theatre. Would you agree with that sort of sentiment? Yeah, the movement the movements are a little bit different. You have to have a, a more obvious movement. It's not as much about the motion. It's more about what's happening in your in your emotional preparation and in the eyes for a lot of the stuff. A lot of it gets done in close ups. In mocap, you have to be able to see the character walking around and wearing the suit. It, it's like you have to just uh, just live the motions a little bit bigger and just be part of it. Uh, you know, uh, part of that environment a little bit more than you would on a film or TV set. Simple things like when your character has to go to take a sip of something, drink for a McCann or whatever, you can't put it in front of the camera and sip like you normally would. It would be sipping far away from your face. It's like all these little things that you have to change that are that are uh, a little bit more performance, uh, you know, larger performance-based. Obviously, it's been released. There's mm-hmm. tons of adverts for it. Have you had chance to see or play the game at all? I haven't had a chance to play it, no. I mean, it came out last week, and uh, like I said, I've got a small family, and I've been a little bit busy. I've got a lot of other projects happening right now. I'm actually going in to do some more stuff for Ubisoft tomorrow. I'm imagining expansion packs and whatnot for different things. Um, so I'm going in tomorrow to do some work on this particular game. I haven't had a chance to play it, but when I saw some of the preliminary uh, tests, uh, renders that they were doing for the characters. I got super excited and I was almost like, maybe I need to get a console and start playing again. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm going to try, try and get at it soon. But I've heard good things and a lot of my friends that knew I was part of it, they've all run out and bought the game and they thought it's quite uh, quite fun. And obviously you're playing um, a captain, aren't you? Yeah, Captain Gibson, yeah. Yeah. What can you tell us about the character that we shouldn't know? <laughs> You know, just to keep it a little bit mysterious, spoiler alert for those that haven't played yet. He's part of one side and realizes he's getting involved in something that he's not quite prepared for. He was hired to do one thing and it turns into another and he doesn't want to go down that route. So I think it's it's a it's a change of heart. It's a little bit of a, a switch from his, his um, game plan, what he thought he was going to do. I don't think he's ready to play ball with what his boss wants. So there's a bit of a journey that he gets to go on. Here's a good question. I always like asking this with mocap artists. Are there any sort of funny anecdotes you can share about the production of the game? The funniest thing is that you have to get used to seeing yourself in this very form-fitting, velour-looking, like it's the soft side of Velcro. It's like a full suit of Velcro, and it's tight as all hell. Because they they have to see your body shape and then they and then they build the character around what motion is done. So it's very like it's a very awkward, completely unflattering, hilarious getup that you have to wear. And then you walk in the room and everyone's dressed like that. And then the rest of the crew around are all sitting at monitors or, or dealing with cameras and, and couldn't care less. Like it's just part of their daily work. But for a first timer, when you put this on, it's pretty it's pretty hilarious. You have to get used to seeing yourself like like that. And then you cut all these dots. I don't know if you've seen uh, on my Instagram, I have a photo of, like, just before going into production. You get all these little, like, kind of like a Sharpie marker. They put dots all over your face. So, you know, the whole thing is is very interesting, Um, the outfit. I always keep going on about the balls. The balls, Mark. (laughs) Like, the the Velcro balls all over? And all the hinging points and the body movement points? Yeah, it's funny because they have it down to an art. You walk into this room and there's, like, two guys waiting there to dress you up and throw balls all over you pun not intended you have to position yourself properly they test your movement and make sure it's in the right position and it's it's very funny you definitely feel like like a little bit of like pinocchio like the puppet coming to life i always like mocap artists when they when they refer to sort of like doing a scene with somebody else and then they're going there's nothing there say like it's a can of something and you're just looking at it and you're sort of going well hang on a sec that's there no it's there when you're fighting over what eye line or trying to figure out where you're supposed to be looking, is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, you're like, 
two people are staring at an imaginary thing, and hopefully you're both staring in the same direction. Yeah, and that's and that's all about the direction and, and the camera operators to tell you where to look and make sure that you're all hitting the same kind of area. But it is funny. I mean, people sort of seem to forget that actors do that every single day when we walk into an audition. We have to pretend things are there because you walk into an audition for anything. There's nothing in the room, and you're pretending. There's eye lines, fake eye lines for other people talking. There's fake eye lines for things that you're referencing. So when you go into a, do a mocap uh, scenario, it's very similar to just auditioning because you're imagining most of it. You have these basic structures to pretend that's a table or pretend that's a wall or pretend, you know. So it's it's a lot of imagination. When you walk into a movie set, everything's built and everything you're using, all the props, they're all legit, they're real, they're in your hand, you can feel them, you can see them, touch them, but like in mocap, everything is, most of, most everything is imagined. So let's talk a bit about you, Mark, you yourself, what made you want to get into acting in the first place? I was in real estate, I was working for a, a bank here in Canada doing mortgages, and I was not really involved in the arts, but I always had a, a, an interest towards them. And then one day I decided to take a hip hop dance class and got into some singing lessons right then because I think everyone in the early 2000s probably wanted to be a Backstreet Boy or maybe it was just me, I don't know. But I enjoyed that that aspect of it, the performance. And, and then I got a chance phone call from someone looking for some background uh, people for this movie that I did back in 2003 and I had signed up back in 1997 I had signed up to do background for a movie just for fun I was in I was in school I was in university and I thought oh it'd be fun to be part of a movie so I gave them my information they took my measurements and took a Polaroid of me to give you an idea of how long ago it was uh, they took a Polaroid and they said we'll call you if we need you they didn't so that was 1997 so 2003 I get a random phone call from somebody saying hey is this Mark I'm like yes uh, you remember you signed up for this thing, uh, for this movie? And I said, yeah, yeah. Do you still look the same? I'm like, well, I mean, I'm six years older and my beard is better, but I don't have a face tattoo and, and uh, I haven't altered my look in any way. They said, perfect. We need you for this movie to do background. I said, oh, okay. So I show up on set. I figured if someone's going to call me six years later and I haven't changed my phone number, I haven't moved, I haven't done anything drastic with my appearance, you know, all these things kind of aligned. That made me go, hmm, maybe I should take this uh, take this job. And I stepped on set, and they had transformed this, like, regular industrial work area, this industrial park. They converted it into a bombed-out village in Afghanistan. And I was like, what the hell is this world? This is amazing. And from that day, I was like, okay, I need to get into this. I asked a couple of actors on set. I'm like, you know, advice. What do I do? How do I get into this? And someone pointed me in the direction of an actor's studio in Calgary that I trained at. It was called Company of Rogues. And the next day I showed up, I threw my money down and I said, teach me. And uh, that was it. From that day forward, I took acting classes and then I, you know, studied hard, got an agent, moved to Vancouver and started built my career there. Then I ended up booking a, a TV series called Helix that brought me to Montreal. I was uh, a series regular on that. I did that for two years. And that brought me to Montreal, where I met my uh, my partner, and her and I have a family now, and that's where I live. Well, actually, funny enough, Helix was going to be my next next question, because you had like thirty or forty episodes, some, somewhere around that. Uh, 20, 26, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What was it like working on that show? I mean, that was a game changer, Matt. That was like that was that was my career builder. That was something that really got me started and gave me uh, a jumping off point to build my career and gave me some recognition in, in, in Montreal, not Montreal, rather in Canada, um, in Canada and uh, Los Angeles um, as, a, as a professional actor. And to, to be in a position to be a series regular on a show is something that a lot of actors that, uh, that I could safely say that have even more talent than me, <laughs> much more talent, may never get the chance to do. And it, it, was, it was a huge opportunity and a huge thing that I was super grateful for and super excited to do. And uh, it changed my life. I mean, I moved from Vancouver within, I, I, I booked the role on, on the 17th of July and I was there, I was in Montreal on the 21st and uh, it, it was like pack your bags and go. And um, my agent, Michelle, at Performers, who's fantastic and has been my agent since 2010, stuck with me through everything. It was just one of our defining moments uh, as a team. It was a huge thing. And it brought me a lot of other opportunities. I mean, 
uh, not only the opportunity to work in a fantastically fun show with great people, I also got to go to Comic-Con in San Diego with the show and did a panel. I did a Latin American press tour in Mexico City for the show. Like I've had so many great opportunities because of it and, and just more piled on on top of that ever since, you know? You always see people doing cosplays of old characters, you know, or characters that are coming into franchises, etc. And there's always that talk of reboots. Should we reboot Star Trek? Well, they've made Picard now. And should we reboot um, Smallville, which you, you did an episode on? Oh, we'll get Tom Welling to do Crisis on Infinite Earth. Crossover, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you ever feel they could do a Helix reboot, maybe? Our show, it had a two-year run, and uh, the ideas, the, the the premise, and the characters were so so cool and so fun to play. I mean, it brought all of us, everyone involved, it brought us all to a different point in our lives. I think sometimes it's just better left the way it is. I mean, if somebody decided to do a continuation, maybe, would I be a part of it if they were to come back with more? Absolutely. It was a blast, and I really enjoyed playing Sergio Biaceros. Do I think that they should? Uh, I don't know. Uh, definitely not a reboot, but if they wanted to continue with the story, I'm in. Matt. Or a spin-off. You know, the, the Biaceros Chronicles. I could do that. Do a TV film. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I like asking this question as well. Obviously, you've been in a number of different TV projects and films. Yeah. Um, which actors and actresses have been your favourites to work with and why? Starting with Helix, um, for me, Jerry Ryan was was incredible. She's just a wonderful human, just an incredible human, and so fun to work with. I grew up watching Voyager, and I shared that with my stepfather. Him and I are both like the Voyager fans, especially. So for me to be able to work with someone like I spent years watching, um, that was really cool. And and the fact that she was just such an awesome person and a joy to work with was really cool. So I would definitely say you know Jerry Ryan. Then I worked with Jason Priestley on uh, on uh, Private Eyes, as we all know from his, his breakout role on 90210. Wonderful professional, funny guy, super funny, kind um, and, and generous with his with his acting, with his producing and acting duties on, on Private Eyes. So I had, a, I had a blast working there. Even, you know, going back to Helix, Billy Campbell. Billy Campbell was just like, you know, our number one. And he was, he was awesome. He was, he was fun. He always kept things fresh, and uh, yeah. You've just mentioned Jerry Ryan there, because obviously she's in Picard, isn't she? She is, and I couldn't be happier to see her reprise that role. I, I think it's, it's, it's incredible. Well, here's a good question for you. As an actor, Mark, as an actor, are there any roles that you haven't done yet that you would like to do? Disability, all these different characters, 
that people should be able to be part of this industry, especially for me with with Arabs. Uh, you know, growing up auditioning for Terrorist Number Three, it always rubbed me the wrong way, considering how much I know about the Arab people and and Lebanese people uh, specifically with my culture, my heritage. It just always rubbed me the wrong way to be seen as so one dimensional in a film and TV world. So I would love to even just play. You know, just the district attorney who is half uh, half Arabic, you know, American Lebanese, a role that is not stereotypical based on where I'm from. It's just part of my character. I have the perfect one for you. What's that? Starfleet ensign. Absolutely, I'd definitely be part of the the, the Starfleet in a heartbeat. And if you think about it, if they do Picard, then it's a win win, isn't it? You know, if anyone's watching your podcast that has a hand in, uh, in, in, in casting anything regarding Star Trek, I'm in. Uh, just, uh, just tell me where to sign. I love, I love, love that universe. So yes, definitely. I have auditioned for um, uh, the most recent uh, one before Picard. Discovery? Yes, yeah. correct. I was just blanking on the, on the title because they, they call it something different when you audition for it. So it was just like it escaped me. Yeah, I've, I've auditioned for that a number of times. This universe is something that I want to be part of, absolutely. Let's be honest here, Mark. When you saw Jerry Ryan, you did exactly the same thing that everybody else did when they watched the trailer. You fangirled out. <laughs> uh, for, for Picard? Yeah. Oh, my God, I squealed. I was just like, uh, yes, I can't believe she's, she's, she's back. With Picard and Next Generation like and all the characters they had for that show, you don't know like who's going to come back. And when I saw her, just her voice, when you hear her off off camera in the trailer, I was just like, yes, this is a choice. This is a good choice. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you a one minute plug, Mark, to plug Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, one of the longest ever gaming titles I think has ever happened on this podcast. Uh, and anything else you've got coming up? Okay, uh, well, I mean, I'm super stoked to be part of this video game, and, uh, and, and I hope everyone that's playing it and will play it is going to enjoy it. Uh, keep an ear out for Captain Gibson, my character, and uh, I'm going to have to get a copy of it myself and, and go for it. I think um, these kind of games, they've become a staple for the video game industry, and, uh, and I'm happy to be part of making another one. Uh, look forward to doing more, hopefully, and then we can talk again about the next video games. As far as other things I've got going, I've got a film that I'm working on this uh, this fall um, that we t- touched on briefly, uh, where I talked about me versus myself, and the details of that will have to be released later. Um, and then November 3rd, I've got a wonderful Christmas movie coming out on Lifetime Network called Always Forever Christmas. It's a fun one. It's a very it's a very light, uh, enjoyable film. I think I think everyone that likes those kind of movies is going to find something that they're going to really enjoy. So I play uh, Scott Jensen on that movie on Lifetime, and uh, I think you'll enjoy that. Other than that, touch base with me in a month and see whatever whatever else is changing. I'm uh, I'm possibly I'm working on something uh, overseas that that might be kind of interesting. I'm trying to hammer out the details on that, and we'll see if that comes to fruition. Maybe we can touch base uh, when that's a go, if that's a go. And maybe we can touch base on that and circle back. But uh, other than that, thank you, Matt, for the opportunity. Mm. Thanks very much for your time, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.